nazywam się Rafał Graczek. Yy, się specjalnie odcinek. Bright, yy, Bright pierwszy, Bright pierwszy, Bright Lem został zintegrowany. Yy, czyli znowu wejdziemy do Clean Roomu i będziecie mieli okazję poznać naszego bardzo, bardzo specjalnego gościa, Cordela Granta. So we are back in the clean room as I said before and uh, we are have a special guest, uh, Cordell Grant. Hello Cordell. Hi. Uh, could you tell us who you are, what's your role in the project and what is happening here? Okay, so my name is Cordell Grant and I'm from Toronto, Canada and I'm visiting uh, here to help assemble uh, Bright Poland, uh, the first Bright Poland satellite. And my role in the project is basically project manager for the entire Bright Constellation, which is all six satellites. And so I'm responsible for making sure that the Austrian, the Polish, and the Canadian satellites all get built in much the same way and, and uh, are all uh, functioning correctly. So you designed all of them, or what was just sort of managing all the sub teams and sub systems? Um, I designed some of the satellite, uh, so I was personally responsible for the mechanical design of the satellite and also for the assembly and integration uh, aspects of the satellite, uh, but I'm mainly these days manage the team that is responsible for the design of the satellite at the uh, Space Flight Lab in Canada. So you are basically a person that knows everything about the satellite? I know a little bit about every part of the satellite, but uh, I am not an expert in every aspect. So, could you tell us what was the uh, hardest thing you know, during the assembly of the whole satellite? Um, there are a few major problems. Uh, and major problems are, are relative. Uh, some problems are really major and some problems are major in that they cause a lot of time to be lost but aren't actually huge problems and we encountered a few problems that caused us to lose time and, and so we had to deal with certain things that wouldn't quite fit the way we expected them to uh, and so we had to find a way to make them fit um, but otherwise there, there weren't many major problems. The hardest thing when assembling a satellite like Bright uh, is that it's so small uh, that it's difficult to get everything inside of the satellite that you actually need uh, to fit. And it makes it even more difficult when your hands are quite large even compared to the size of the satellite itself. And so getting even your fingers inside uh, the satellite to do the things you need to do can be quite challenging. In the end it took us 11 straight days of, of doing nothing but assembling uh, to fully integrate the satellite. Uh, so, how many satellites like that you have designed and built so far? Um, this is the third Bright satellite that I've, uh, I've built. Uh, before Bright, I also worked on Kenex 2, which is now in space and it has been in space since 2008. And so, a lot of our experience with uh, assembling small satellites came from the Kenex 2 experience, which was even smaller and a little more difficult in some ways to assemble. So, as they say, the experience is one of the most important things, uh, especially in, in stuff like satellites. Uh, so, we try not to change the satellites one from the other much, right? As much as possible, we don't like to change things unless we have to, or there's a very good reason to. Uh, and the reason is that anytime you change things, then you introduce new problems, and it takes time and it takes effort to, to solve those new problems and it costs money. And so uh, we like to keep things the same unless there's a very strong motivation. So if we really need the satellite to perform better, then maybe we will change something. But if we just want it to look nicer maybe, then it's probably not reason enough to make a change and risk spending a lot more time and money. Okay, and what's your feeling about working in Warsaw with us here? 
Well, it's been uh, a pleasure to be in, in Poland. I, uh, I love every time I get to, uh, to come here. And everybody, of course, is so professional and very dedicated to uh, making sure that Bright is a success. And uh, everyone's very interested in doing a good job. And, and I just enjoy being in Poland in general. I find the people very friendly and, and the food is excellent. Well, so, this is indeed very important. So, much better than Austrian food. <laughs> Great. The bright is integrated and it looks beautiful. Could you describe what are those things which can be seen on bright? This is the fully assembled bright satellite. Uh, it's inside of an, a, a protective plastic enclosure 
And the reason for that is just to protect the very delicate uh, satellite and, and solar panels from any damage. And so you can see I can handle it and, and move it and rotate it very easily. Uh, the, re the main thing that's very delicate on the satellite are these solar panels. And so these are very thin electronic equipment covered in glass that can crack very easily. And so that's what we really want to protect. On this face of the satellite, we have the aperture where the star tracker uh, looks out at stars and uses those stars to determine the orientation of the satellite. Behind this cover is the telescope, and that's the scientific instrument for the satellite. And it has a cover on it to protect it from dust and debris. Even though we're in a clean room uh, and the environment is very clean, it's still not perfectly clean. And so we want to keep the instrument as clean as we possibly can, do everything we can to make sure that no dust gets inside of the telescope because dust can uh, ruin the, the science and can make the, the science uh, data not as good as it otherwise could be. At this end of the satellite we have uh, a magnetometer and it's uh, stood away from the satellite so that the magnetic fields that are generated by the satellite itself don't interfere with its readings. Here you can see a sun sensor. This is also used to help the satellite determine how it's pointed in space. And so it figures out where the sun is in its field of view and calculates angles based on that. If I rotate a little bit, this is the port where we used to connect uh, to the satellite. And so that's how we do a lot of our testing here in the lab. So the, we connect this connector to the satellite and we're able to send it commands and we're also able to charge the batteries because we don't have any solar uh, energy in the clean room and so the solar cells can't generate any power so we need to provide power to the batteries through this and right now the satellite is just being held off by this little plug that we installed this white square thing is a, an antenna for the uh, communication system that downloads data from the spacecraft to the ground and the little uh, mounts in the, in the corners of the satellite here, and there are two more on the back, those are for the UHF antennas. And the UHF antennas will be installed later. They look something like that. And those are what we use to communicate up to the satellite and send it commands. So for those, could you explain us why it is so golden? So, uh, the satellite is gold in color because uh, to control your temperature in space, you don't have air that, uh, like we do here on Earth to keep us cool or, or make us warm. Um, so you have to control your temperature in other ways. And the way we do it is similar to the way we control our temperature on a hot summer day. If we want to stay nice and cool, then we make sure we wear a nice white clothing rather than a black clothing, which would make us very hot. So on the satellite, we've chosen a golden uh, cover because that absorbs just the right amount of, of solar energy and emits uh, just the right amount of energy that it keeps the satellite at a very nice uh, temperature, around the same temperature that humans are comfortable at, around 20 degrees Celsius. So thank you very much for, for everything you did for the last week and uh, for your interview. Uh, so we'll see each other next week. Bright TV, www.bright-tv.pl